Welcome to John Opie's Blacksmith Shop, a scaled-up recreation of the original 1854 shop built at Steventon. The blacksmith shop was a necessity for early settlers. It was a place regularly visited for repairs to horse-drawn vehicles, farm machinery, or to make garden tools and household items. The blacksmith was a man with many skills and expertise, including that of a farrier, shipwright and wheelwright. The blacksmith shop was well equipped with many tools needed for these trades. The tools varied among each specialist and was left up to the blacksmith apprentice under instruction from the master smith to build the tools required for certain jobs. We're burning a bit of charcoal because we don't want to make too much smoke because there's a fire pan on. Uh, so we've got charcoal here instead of, a, instead of wood. Uh, and we're going to go in this way. There, Forge is used to heat up iron or steel. The constant compressed draft of air from the bellows and the fuel intensify the flame by increased oxygen level. This heat enables the blacksmith to fashion the shape of the repair that has been commissioned. Till that is hot. Wow. Uh -huh. He's able to heat the steel up and bend it in those shapes. Now, you can see there, uh, uh, Glenn is, uh, he's heated up that piece of steel and at a certain temperature and you, you get to, well, I'll let you explain it, Glenn. Um, what, what happens uh, when you heat the steel up? It's soft like butter, uh, but now we're just getting ready to do a link. You see the links there? I think it might be the uh, only, well, the closest blacksmith shop to the, uh, to the city. Uh, I don't know of another one that's any closer. I think it was Anderson, uh, Roseworthy. But it is quite interesting. Um, nowadays, a lot of the blacksmiths, they make fine art, like little flowers and various ornaments, etc. But back in the earlier days, it uh, was never done that way. It was mainly for broken down equipment. In order to weld the two end pieces of the rebar together, Glenn first flattens out the edges with his ballpain hammer on the anvil face to make the formation of the weld easier to complete. The idea is to create a chain length that looks uniform with similar all round thickness and shape dimensions. Welding is one of the most challenging practices a blacksmith can learn and do because the temperature of the metal has to be just right. Not hot enough? Not having the temperature right is detrimental to the welding process. If the metal is too cold, it will not seamlessly bind together, resulting in a weak fatigue joint. Once the two ends meet and the temperature of the metal is brought to the right heat, the hardest part of the welding process can commence. Within a limited time frame, Glenn has to beat the metal together forming one solid piece of fused metal. From there, Glen can continue to refine the shape of the link to the desired form by correcting any deformities from the previous working of the metal. The anvil's flat face, the step, the square hardy hole and the horn are all used to manipulate the metal in certain ways to achieve the final outcome for a perfectly rounded link. There we have it. Hopefully the demonstration has provided an insight to the effort necessary to create a simple chain link and appreciation of the daily work exertion required by blacksmiths back in the 1800s. The total time length to process one link was roughly 20 minutes and involved only a couple of stages to be completed.